Maybe people missed my initial position. As we watch the media report on this Jane testimony, let me remind you, the biggest red flag that I had and personal trigger for me was how these people continuously used this young girl, Rashona Lanfair, to make their point. When, if you think about it, they claim Robert Kelly was doing all this and doing all that, so there should be an ongoing pattern of this type of behavior. So it was a immediate red flag when all these janky ass sources start coming out here doing interviews. But hey, what do I know? I'm just watching all these people come together and pull off a fake ass united front. But what happens when all these people get to beefing with one another and everything that they're trying to cover up seems to seep to the surface? And while everybody wants to blame Robert Kelly, I showed you the blueprint. Can I with you? What? ACP, do you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the call. Look. Got some weed? Dang. Gotta get some. Alright, hurry up. These are them here, everybody here. We waiting on you. No motherfucking games with you, boy. I gave you 120 hours to get back in touch with me, nigga. But fuck them 120 hours, nigga. You talking about my daughter. You know you supposed to be working with her music, R. Kelly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Robert R. Kelly, the singer, you bitch ass nigga. I got you, boy. Yeah, come fuck with me. This savage. Tim Savage. Fuck you, nigga. R. Kelly, by now, you should know that you should come see me. You know who I am. You know who you have at your house. My daughter, Jocelyn Savage. My name is Tim Savage. <laughs> Listen, bro, the, the car, look, bro, the man dealt with R. Kelly in my living room, bro. The man dealt with R. Kelly in my kitchen. We dealt with Doug Russell in my kitchen, bro. Whether or not these women were over age and once um, it was determined that they were of age when they met him we faced a host of issues and so like Tim said three years ago when they came in my office uh, after he called me you know I first started to strategize how can I help because legally there weren't too many options um, but we had to do was destroy the narrative that's been surrounding this individual and many cases like this that these are women and no one cares for that these are women that no one will fight for. And so we took a um, outside the box approach and we started to destroy the narrative. We had to convince men and women across the country to believe. Very talented young man. <laughs> Boy, be brave. Don't be afraid. We're gonna go all the way. Boy, be brave. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I admit that I don't know my music. 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 I
shit that I wrote on my music Want it back, but they don't wanna do it What the fuck, nigga, I wrote that music I did that bumping ground, I did that twill I am handcuffed, like a lot of you motherfuckers I'm handcuffed by my destiny It's too late, they should've did this 30 years ago When her mother found out And that her mother He actually stayed at their home in Detroit And her mother uh, actually was sexually attracted to him as well And he said when Aaliyah would go to sleep that he would uh this now this is what he said he said that he would go in the living room and him and her would do sexual acts on the couch while Aaliyah was sleeping in the bedroom it's too late <laughs> Now, it doesn't take long for those doing their research about the topic to realize the business behind this whole production of Surviving R. Kelly. It also won't take long for you to discover the biggest corruption I've pointed out. I want to send a message to the enablers of Mr. Kelly, to the agents and the managers and the attorneys and the others who stood idly by and looked the other way and turned a blind eye while teenage girls were sexually assaulted for over two decades. I will not rest until each of you is brought to justice. <laughs> Now, as we reflect on how majority of these stories began to emerge on social media, let's stop bypassing what I pointed out to you long time ago. These people strategically maneuvered the way they did in order to manufacture these charges. And then when I brought to the public how I believe this was clearly them rehashing the 08 trial, mixing all these janky ass people in the mix and wondering why the whole story is falling apart it should be a no-brainer why i don't engage with some of these janky ass people who were eager to do the most on these platform and ignore their common sense especially when all these people like michael alvinati kim fox claim they were going to prosecute these so-called enablers and then we see these extortionists make their appearances on the stand as though they're credible and people continue to bypass my position as all of these people are not credible. So with that being said, it's very interesting these employees who were embezzling money, who were doing all this fraudulent activity and who were supposed to be locating this man's assets and money end up engaging themselves in a lot of janky ass business and got caught up in a web of lies. Now clearly we saw the intimidating tactics being used to get these people to cooperate and with that being said doesn't that pose a question as to their credibility the motivating factors especially when you hear things like oh boss baby is getting government benefits all this financial assistance and ppp loans and it's just funny all these participants end up getting these PPP loans, even though according to their stories, they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that. So how in the hell were they operating businesses? Make this shit make sense. Even the ones like Geronda Pace who tried to create these online businesses. It should tell you a lot when they ain't even got common sense to know an online store does not have to operate within a Monday through Friday schedule and be closed on the weekends. Make that shit make sense. It's online. But the people that advocate for these frauds are like to skip around that as though it has nothing to do with the topic at hand when it reveals the characters of these individuals and the things they will do when money is the motivation. But hey, what can you expect when the people leading these numbnuts on the internet that are clearly violating this man's due process rights get behind people who get on their platforms and say shit like this? Hey, Tuesday, did our job. You thought 
the information to the public. Surviving R. Kelly went off, we kept that shit going. We got bus drivers, we got police officers, we got assistants, we got friends, we got people to lie, we got the storage, we got motherfucking video, audio, we got the storage, we got motherfucking video, audio. You have seen Asriel at my house, you have seen parents at my house. Nah, you done fucked up, you know that, don't you? I see what I'm saying. I, no, I, I thought... No, so, you know what I'm saying? You done fucked up now, you know that, don't you? <laughs> the more questions that cop asks, the more I thought I wasn't going to never see daylight again. And this time, you said you bought the bottle. I was just waiting for them to tell me they seen that damn videotape. But they had... I, yeah, I... No, you done fucked up, don't you? No, it doesn't. No, you don't fuck them. Without the tape, they had nothing. Now, common sense should have told a lot of these people. A lot of these people on these platforms are janky than a motherfucker. And if you thought they was going to grace my platform or try to influence anything that I think or feel, you batshit crazy. When I tell you that I believe they're strategically doing the things they're doing, interfering with the federal investigation, putting themselves dead in the middle of bullshit, and then getting on these platforms trying to play dumb as these people hide behind these anonymous names in court. Meanwhile, all these co-conspirators have been running amok. Make this shit make sense. Okay, I did want to tell you, like, um, to switch the 90 days out, but when you do switch them out, I do have a lot of stuff to talk to you about, like, really good stuff. What do you mean? I, we already talked about last week switching out the days. We've been talking about that, so why are you saying wow? Yeah, because you hung up on me and called right here to the building, and they called me down the floor, I mean, to the floor, Now, call me crazy, but I just don't think victims should be going to jail facilities, putting money on their abusers' books, allegedly, and doing the most. Meanwhile, all these people on the Internet are trying to intimidate and coerce them into telling the stories that they feel like they should be telling and then be surprised when they're not credible. Then when I go the extra mile to show you that I don't believe Robert Kelly is behind all of these people doing this monkey ass shit, it should be clear as day that people should hold accountable the individuals that are instead of trying to silence people like me who have clearly been targeted by the same tactics unsuccessfully. Isn't it strange how all of these alleged accusers allegedly have been intimidated threatened and all this other stuff but the only person that's been mentioned in getting government assistance section 8 and all this other shit is this other boss baby over here is it far-fetched to believe that these Janes have been made to believe that they had this leverage over this man and clearly it's all backfiring on public display I'm going to take it a step further. Since when did Section 8 houses become a place for witness protection, especially when these people are in positions to get these PPP loans? And think about all these low-income families who can't even get on the Section 8 housing listings. Make this shit make sense. But again, a lot of people fail to realize how I pointed out a lot of these individuals who claim to support R. Kelly are obviously working against the mission at hand. I don't already talk to the twins. I don't already talk to the Shanti McGee husband. I don't already talk to Don Russell. I don't already talk to Linda Mitchell. Oh. Like the sweetest joy next to get pussy. Pitch a breath, grab the loading. Why the words be a toady? Quick to pick the bitch, the rap gang is Bow down. <laughs> to Hail Mary, 
One quick C. What do we have here now? It's my tie C. Now it will be clear that at some point, as I pointed out, a lot of people got so distracted listening to these voices, they bypassed the common sense I said in why I require my audience to do a little digging to understand the information I'm putting before you. Now, if I feel like people have been intentionally trying to deflect from the topic at hand, I put this on display and I make it relatable as to why these accusers are flipping and participating with these narratives. It should be common sense. After they put these accusers up on public display, it should be very obvious how individuals deliberately targeted them for their own motivation. Sorry for, no, 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 no. Don't say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to me. Do not say anything to me. Joy is in jail for assault. So I feel so sorry for the both of you. Don't say anything other to me. I feel bad for you. I know. Yes, you do. You do. You do. You do. You knew I was coming up here to get Joy and you lied to her. You lied to her. Yep. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you, babe. I'm sorry for you. I am so sorry for you. Oh, it's bare. It's done. It's done, bear. You're, it's done. It's over. It's over. You may not even make it to trial. I'm so sorry for you. I'm sorry. I really did love you. And you, you lied to me, and you used me, and you played me. Yes, you did, bear. Yes, you did, bear. Bye. This whole topic revealed a lot of hypocrisy from the supporters and the people against Robert Kelly. So when we see these people who wanted to push these narratives so bad, get these girls to tell their stories so bad, and then have to come out here defending the things that these accusers put them in. I can't do nothing but gag when now all of a sudden when they wanted them to come out and talk, now they're calling them liars and then trying to deflect as though we're the one who have been victim shaming when the obvious message I presented to you from day one is the strategies they're using is going to be the reason why people like me have reasonable doubt. Thus, that is why I believe these individuals are abusing the these platforms. Duh. Hey y'all, it's Sparkle. Um, have my phone here because I have notes that I want to make sure that I say everything that I want to say today. Um, and forgive the bolting of the jets overhead. We have the air mortar show here. Um, I want to put a few things in context. Um, I'm letting those who really know, support and love me know that this, this is a family feud. Yesterday was a day I didn't think I'd ever see. Nevertheless, at this point, I'm pretty much prepared for anything. After I learned my niece was cooperating with the investigators, I prayed and I thanked God. Also, I did some thinking as I often do throughout this whole process. Asked myself, if I were them, what could be said that legitimately make this make sense and spare them from crazy? My answer is nothing. Knowing that there's no right answer to explain their ongoing actions and years of support for Robert once learning about that tape, the clear plan is to try to take me down because I've been so vocal. I knew that there was some anger and resentment because of my stance, which is why I'm like, okay, they're gonna handle it their way, and I'm going to handle it my way. And I was thinking, one day my niece will be older and will have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And there's no expiration on this concept, but I'm very clear that day ain't close. I know us speaking privately and candidly to her it looks like betrayal of her mother. But now being an adult, I was hoping she was closer to being more independent thinking at this point. 
yesterday, my niece absolutely, <clears throat> she absolutely doing the will of her mom. This is another form of the terrible decision making of her mom. And in my opinion, the unfortunate continuing allegiance to Robert. As the youngest of the group and all I've ever known was family and community. So I operated from that space from the beginning of my career by bringing them in to show them that it was not just about me, but about us getting this record deal that I was about to get. We were a gospel group just years prior. So me thinking about them for them was partly programmed in me, all I knew. Again, because Robert was given the opportunity to have his own imprint record label, I introduced my sister, my brother-in-law, and my niece to Robert at CRC Studios in 97 in hopes of landing my niece a career as an artist in this industry. Not a concert, as she testified. I didn't stop there. I asked Robert to check out my brother-in-law who played the guitar and other family members in hopes he'd assist them with their musical careers as well. I'm saying this again. I'm saying this again to say not all that you heard yesterday from my niece is true. I don't want to hinder this legal process, I don't, but to testify that I had my niece sit on Robert's lap and rub his head and have her ask him to be her godfather is an absolute fucking lie. You all cannot imagine the hurt that comes from pain caused by the people that you live and are willing to die for. Another lie, Robert and I were never in a romantic relationship, never. To show you sabotage is a highly priority within them. If Robert and I were in a romantic relationship, you and your mom was cool allowing you to start a relationship with him? Again, no right answers for their actions. This journey of mine, I started with the greatest of intentions and all I've gotten from it is hell. This is not how we were raised and it has fucked up family names, relationships, and the death, allegedly. Enough is enough. I've endured being not believed before, so my niece's false statements don't bother me as much as her mindset and willingness to tell the lies. I'm certain it's from her mom, certain. But she's now old enough to start bearing some level of responsibility of her actions. I love her more than life itself. So this is all I'm going to say regarding her and her mother, unless I have to. Something good.